Hello once again class and welcome to another mock lecture. In this video we're going to be tackling an introduction to percents. So for anyone wondering what even is a percent, this is the video for you. All right, we're going to start off by talking about some things to know about percentages. And the first one, of course, is going to be its meaning. Percent basically means per 100. It comes from the Latin phrase per centum, which breaks down into being per 100 is kind of how that translates. But I like to think about percentages as a parts per hundred, which means that a percentage tells you how many we would have if the total were a hundred. All right, so what do I mean by that? Well, here's a hundred shapes. Let's pretend we've got a hundred shapes here. Notice that 20 of them are red squares. And so we could say 20% of the shapes are red squares. Again, the percentage means 20 out of a hundred in this case. And, and in this example, there is actually 100 things. But notice that because the way that we're defining it, right, per 100 or 20 out of 100, that is really describing a fraction, okay? So percentages basically can be reduced to thinking about, okay, it's a fraction. It's got a numerator and a denominator. The numerator is how many things that we're looking for, and the denominator is, is 100 in this example. So we'd say 20 over 100. And that's how we get that 20% of the shapes are red squares. Because again, the percentage sign means per 100. There's 20 parts per 100. So, okay, percents are fractions. And because they're fractions, we don't actually have to have 100 items. Here we just have 10. But still, right, you'll notice I didn't get rid of this. Still, it's true that 20% of the shapes are red squares in this example. Because 2 out of 10 is exactly the same fraction as 20 out of 100. You've just divided by 10 in the top and the bottom. You've reduced the fraction, as it were. But okay, what this means is that we don't actually have to have 100 things, right? If we did have 100 of them, then we'd say that 20, there'd, there'd be 20 red squares. But here in this sample size of 10, only two. So two out of 10, but they're the same fraction. And so we would still say, okay, that's 20%. And this is giving birth to what's known as the parts per whole model. The part is how many you have, and the whole is the total number of things that there are. In this case, we're looking at the percentage of red squares. What is the percentage of red squares in this collection of shapes? So we'd have two as the part. How many shapes are there total? 10. So two out of 10, this is called the part and whole model. And it's basically the thing that we're gonna focus on moving forward. By the way, because we're describing it as a fraction, I think this is worth pointing out. 2 tenths or 20 uh, hundredths, both reduced to the exact same decimal. And when you convert the fraction, the parts per hundred or, or whatever the fraction, the reduced fraction is, into a decimal, that thing is called the percent decimal. And it's actually really important. In fact, you have to use the percent decimal when you're doing the part and whole model. And we'll talk more about that here in a little bit. But because they're fractions, right, let's say that we want to convert what is the percentage of 2 out of 5. Right, that's what this is asking. So if you use your part and whole model, uh, there's a couple ways you can do it. One, you could actually just straight up do two divided by five on a calculator and it would give you this. Here what I'm showing you is, is that I'm converting it into a parts per hundred situation. I multiplied the top and bottom by 20 just because I noticed that the denominator multiplied by 20 is 100. Since we're unreducing a fraction, whatever I do to the bottom, I need to also do to the top. So okay, I've got 40 out of 100 uh, and that's just 0.4 or 40%. And these mean the same thing, right? One of them's a percent decimal, one of them's an actual percentage. And we want to be able to convert between these two things quickly. And luckily, there is a way to do that, right? You got your percent decimal, you got your percentage, you can look and see, oh, there's some commonalities between them. And really, the commonality is that they're the same number, all you've done is move the decimal point. So when you have, you know, something point something something, that's kind of what I'm trying to denote here. If I want to convert, and right now it's in a percent decimal, let's say, okay, so, so maybe it's, you know, 0 0.16 or something like that. If I want to convert a percent decimal into a percentage, you just move the decimal place twice, and that's it. Whenever you're moving a decimal place one time, you're multiplying by 10. So if we need to mo move the decimal place twice, we're multiplying by 100. And so now this is my percentage. So let's say I have 0.34 as a percent decimal. If I convert that into a percentage, I just move the decimal point twice to the right, and I have 34%, okay? To go backwards, you just move the decimal point 
left twice. All right, and that is going to be a division by 100. So if I want to turn 64.7% into a percent decimal, that would be 0 0.647 because I've moved the decimal point twice to the left. All right. Uh, so anytime you use percentage in a calculation, you want to be using the percent decimal. Right. That's that's the thing I was getting at. They're the same thing, but when you're actually using it in a calculation, you don't want to use the whole number percent, like 40%. You want to use 0.4 uh, in the parts, the part and whole model. Right. In this thing. Um, notice that this thing. The part and whole model has three different quantities in it. And so if you know any two of them, you're going to be able to solve for the other. So there's a lot of um, examples that we're going to get to where sometimes we know the part and the whole. We need the percentage. Sometimes we know the part and the percentage. So we need to figure out the whole. And sometimes we, we know the whole and the percentage and we need to figure out the part. Those are kind of like the three main types of questions that we're going to be looking at using this model. The question is, how would you solve for them, right? Let's suppose that percentage and whole are given and we need to figure out the part. Well, I would start with the part and whole model and I would just notice that if I need to get the part by itself, I need to multiply the left-hand side of this equation by the whole, which is really multiplying by whatever the whole is divided by one, right? It's like a fraction. But if you have something in the numerator and something in the denominator, they're gonna cancel. Whatever you do to one side though, you have to do to the other. So if I'm going to multiply the left-hand side by the whole, I need to also multiply the right-hand side by the whole. And so I get this. The three little dots, by the way, means therefore. Uh, but part would be equal to the percentage times the whole. All right? And again, it has to be in a percent decimal. Uh, what if we know the part and the percentage, but we don't know the whole? And by the way, I didn't mention this last time. This little symbol right here, that means suppose. That's my little suppose abbreviation. So suppose we know the part and the percentage, right? Suppose those are given, we don't know the whole. Well, in this case, I would do exactly what we just did. I would multiply both sides by the whole to get it out of the denominator position in the, uh, on the left-hand side. Now it's in the numerator position on the right-hand side. It's being multiplied by the percentage. So to undo that multiplication of the percentage, we would just divide both sides by the percentage. And so here we go. To find a whole, you take the part and you divide it by the percentage. Okay, all just manipulating the part and whole model to get these things. And of course, if uh, you're, you're given the part and the whole, just do the division to figure out what the percentage is. The part and the whole model already has the percentage isolated. So you could just do the division to figure out, you know, what it is. All right, armed with that knowledge, let's do some examples. All right, example number one. 124 is what percent of 220? Always start part and whole model. Start with this thing. Figure out what's given and what's not given. What, what are we trying to figure out in this case? Well, it's asking us what percent. So, okay, percentage is the thing that we don't know in this example. Uh, we just need to figure out which, which of these two things is the part and which is the whole. One very clear indicator that you're looking at a whole is this word right here. If it says of something that is usually going to be the whole followed after that so in this case it says 124 is what percent of 220 so 220 is going to be our whole in this example so i'll put it down there which means that 124 is the part i'll just do this division on a calculator and i get a repeating decimal i'll just truncate it at the second six right so right here this is where I'm looking. I don't need to round because the number right after the six is not five or greater. And there we go. Now, again, it's asking us what percent 124 is of 220. So we've given a percent decimal, but we need to interpret this, this uh, result. So what I'll do is I'll just move the decimal point two times over to the right. And so we get 56.36%. All right. So 124 is 56.36 approximately percent of 220. By the way, I think now is a good time to mention that it is possible for the part to be bigger than the whole, right? I could have easily made this 325, and it would read exactly the same. In our math, in fact, we would do exactly the same thing here as well. We would just plug in 325 for the part, which is bigger than the whole, and we get 1.4773, and here I did round up uh, that 2 because the number after it was a 7. 
But so in this case, 325 is 147.73% of 220, which makes sense because it's more than the whole. It's more than 220, so it's more than 100%. All right, just wanted to throw that out there. Example number two, what is 62% of 185? So again, starting with the part and whole model. Uh, we're given the percentage in this example, just straight up. It's a percentage, so we know that goes there. The of is there. Remember, that's an indicator of being the whole. So 185 is going to be our whole. We need to figure out what's the part. You might remember that we've already solved the part whole model for the part. It's part is equal to percentage times whole. Or we could just multiply both sides by 185 here. And either way, we're going to get 0 0.62 times 185. Multiplying these two things together just gives us 114.7. 114.7 is 62% of 185. All right, next one. 672 is 84% of what number? Again, the indicator is there. The of is there. What we don't know in this example is the whole, right? That's the thing that's unknown. We know 672 is going to be the part then. We know 84% obviously is going to be the percentage. So we're going to go and stick those things in. Notice, and I've kind of been glossing over this when we've been plugging in the percentage, and I think I did this last time, but notice I'm not plugging in 84 to the percentage. I'm plugging in 0.84, right, to the percentage. Have to use percent decimal. All right, again, we've already isolated the uh, whole in the part whole model. It's part divided by percentage. But again, you could just multiply both sides here by the whole. You'd have 0.84 times our whole. Then you'd need to divide both sides by 672 to get it out of the multiplication, right, with, with uh, the whole there. And so you'd get this, right, 672 divided by 0 0.84. Again, plugging it into our calculator, actually give me a whole number this time, 800. All right, so 60, 672 is 84% of 800. And last but not least, a word problem. It says the hotel tax in Portland is 6%. Suppose you stay two nights in a room that is $72 per night. How much tax will you be charged at checkout? I invite you to pause the video. Give this a shot. Use your part whole model. Figure out what's given, right? What are you trying to find? All right, I think that was enough pause. Uh, let's go through it. See how you did. So I'm starting with the part whole model. Uh, we are given the percentage. It's 0 0.06. What we need to figure out, though, is what is the 72? Is this a part or is it a whole? Well, to figure this out, I asked myself this question up here, right? What are we finding 6% of? What is the, what is the tax 6% of? Oh, it's 6% of the cost, right, per night. Okay, well, that's given. That's $72. So, okay, 6% of 72, that means 72 must be the whole. So we'd have part is equal to 0 0.06 times 72. And again, notice that uh, when you move the decimal point twice to turn this into a, um, into a percent decimal, the decimal exists right here right now. That is the worst dot I've ever drawn in my life. But it needs to move two spaces to the left, so it's here. Anytime you, there's an empty space, there's just a zero in front of it, and that's where I'm getting the, the 0 0.06 from. But anyway, part is 0 0.06 times 72. So every night that you stay is going to be $4.32 additional in this hotel tax. Okay, so that is a cost per night. So we have to ask ourselves, well, how many nights are we staying? Two of them. Right, we're staying two nights. So I'm just going to multiply 432 by two and you get 864. So $8.64 in taxes. Notice that I've put my units of measure there, right? It's in dollars. Uh, I didn't have an opportunity to round, but usually for dollar amounts, you want to round to the nearest cent. Uh, and then I've given some context, right? This $8 is an amount in taxes. Okay, so I've, I was given a word problem and I'm giving kind of a word answer. It makes sense in the context of the situation. And that is gonna do it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you guys learned something. If you have any questions, please shoot me an email or leave a comment below. Thanks a ton for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.